Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and right behind me I have a forklift motor that I'm repurposing uh, for an electric lawn tractor project, just kind of a big crazy stupid project made from recycled parts. Unfortunately, in the previous project, I was using this hub which went to a Geo Metro transmission and now I need to go to a chain so I need some way to put a sprocket on there and really that should be done on a lathe. I don't have a lathe. Uh, what I do have going for me is I've got jumper cables and a hacksaw and um, an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. So uh, I was originally trying to figure out how to attach some sort of a small sprocket with a hub like this. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the hacksaw, cut off the extra materials, and I found a sprocket, which is not too much smaller on the inside than the hub is. So I'm hoping I can turn this down by putting the entire thing onto the electric motor, spinning it up and using angle grinder, uh, emery cloth, whatever I've got to get it to just the right size so we can put this sprocket on. So let's give it a shot. So first thing was just to slide the coupler onto the shaft of the electric motor. And then I marked it with a file. And I used the jumper cables to connect it to a 12 volt battery. So then the motor spun up and I thought I could just use a hacksaw to uh, just start cutting away on it. Uh, frankly, I didn't expect it to go fast, but it just wasn't too easy to use a hacksaw. Even at 24 volts, it spun really fast, but then it was jumping around. Uh, nothing was holding the hub in position, so what I did is I drilled a hole and tapped it to be able to put a set screw through there. So that was a 1024 hole that I drilled and tapped. And here's the set screw that I added in there. You can kind of see it. It's kind of hard to get focus here. Um, but once I had the set screw, then I could just uh, put it back on the shaft, tighten down that set screw, and hopefully this time that hub shouldn't be sliding around on the shaft while I'm trying to cut it. So I kept going trying to cut it with uh, just the hacksaw. This time I got a little smarter, used a little bit of that, that cutting fluid. Um, I actually did take all the teeth straight off one of these hacksaw blades. So after that I got a little bit smarter and I decided that uh, Maybe not even lube and a hacksaw blade was good enough. Maybe just the angle grinder with a cutoff disc in it. And I was able to do a significant portion of the cutting here with that cutoff disc. In the end, I did eventually switch back to the hand hacksaw just to finish the cutting. So it took a little while, but we got that entire hunk. Don't need that material anymore. But still got to figure out how to get this on there. I cleaned up the end of the hub with the angle grinder, first with a grinding disc and then a flapper disc. And then after that I cleaned up the other edge just using some emery cloth. Next I used my micrometer to measure the outside of the hub and then also the inside diameter of the sprocket to see how far off they were. And then I used my flapper disc on my angle grinder to grind it down to pretty much that exact amount. 0.615. That should be dead on. Yeah, it's really, really close. Okay, so essentially this is what the finished part looks like. It's turned down so I can fit that sprocket on there. Pretty shiny, and I got a set screw right there. So it slides right onto the splined shaft of the motor. If we can, the angle, a little dark in there, hard to see the splines. And I think what I'm going to do now is put this in the freezer and heat up the sprocket. Next, I did a little experiment. I was hoping to use this uh, induction hot plate to heat the sprocket directly, but it has a, a feature preventing you from doing that because it wasn't large enough, as large as a frying pan. Um, so what I tried next was putting a frying pan in there, and unfortunately that didn't work so well either. I gave up on it and I just put it in my regular oven. Okay, here we go. This is hot. Um, I had it in the oven for a while. Uh, our other part is cold. I put that in the freezer. Ooh, frosty cold. Um, and I'm hoping I can get these parts to go together because of that. So here goes nothing. Oh, so close. That is so, so close.
No? I don't know. I'm not sure how straight that is. Uh, you know, I don't have a little step or a shoulder cut in here with a, um, you know, on a lathe or anything like that. So I guess I'll just have to put it on the motor, spin it, see how wobbly the sprocket is. Okay, moment of truth if it's anywhere near straight or not. I don't know, pretty straight I guess. I mean, I guess that looks pretty good from here. I think though that for not using a lathe or anything, this is looking pretty good. Um, it's on there pretty solid. I mean, I cannot, I cannot move that off and it's, uh, it's nice and square. Um, so all I'm going to do now is put a little bit of a weld around here just to keep it in place. I also don't have anything like a welding table, so I'm just going to clamp this down to some scrap bare steel, put my ground clamp on there, see if I can do a little weld. Okay, I'm gonna say that that is some ugly welding, but it's for the junk parade and it should hold, should be solid. I can always grind it down if I need to. And of course, the other important part of this is just that I didn't get so crazy with the welds that it doesn't fit the chain anymore. Looks like it's just fine on the chain though. Overall, so far I'm liking this, um, that set screw right there though is a little on the small side. Um, I figured I can always drill a bigger hole. I can't drill a smaller hole. So I uh, set that up so I can still go up to like a quarter 20. And the other thing is it's just a single set screw. I think I probably want two. So I'll probably have to head back over to the drill press to uh, drill another one. But overall, I think that's actually looking pretty good. I mean, I test fit the chain and it, it fits. And I think this is gonna be a, an okay drive system for the tractor. So that sprocket right on the end of the electric motor. I also tried checking the RPM of the motor by putting a little tag on there, recording at some various shutter speeds with the camera, but no, it's way too fast. I, I couldn't find out what the RPM is. Um, really, I'd have to use something like a laser tachometer to figure that out. But if you subscribe and tune in next time, we'll keep working on this project. See you then.